everyone, and welcome to Quick Hits. My name is Sean Piers. I am your host of Quick Hits. I am also the president of Dental Piers, which brings you Quick Hits. And we are in for some fun and exciting stuff today. We are going to be talking about the world of marketing. Uh, an exciting world, one that is definitely evolving for dentists over the last little while and is continuing to evolve on a very consistent basis. So a lot of stuff to keep up on. And I am joined by a fantastic guest who can help you definitely stay up to date in that world of marketing by the name of Gavin Mohan. Now, now, Gavin is the founder and the chief excitement officer of Ripe Resolution. So what exactly does that mean? Well, you know, I mean, Gavin came into the world of marketing in sort of an interesting way because he was actually studying neuroscience and behavioral psychology at the University of Toronto, St. George, when he took a summer, a summer position, uh, basically an internship, if you will, with Universal Music Canada. And it was there that he got into being exposed to the world of marketing and mass media and fell in love with what it could do. And he could actually see the connection between mass media and neuropsychology. So there was a lot of overlap in, in what he was actually studying and taking, taking things in a bit of a different direction. Uh, so he, he, he worked on harnessing those skills, those talents, and 12 years ago, formed his own company, which is Ripe Resolution. And the goal of, of Ripe Resolution is to specialize in content creation, platform design, things like that, that really help get a name out there. And it's been very successful for him. He has an exciting array of clients that he's worked with over the years, including Four Seasons Hotel, the Toronto Maple Leafs, which as an Ottawa Senators fan, I'll try not to give him too hard a time over, uh, the Toronto Raptors, Lululemon, Louis Vuitton, Samsung, GQ, Drake, The Weeknd, cool names like that, right? And some more of the world's top brands that are out there. So he's got a vast array of experience working with some big names, but he doesn't just work with big names. He's also done a lot of work because of his close connections with friends, colleagues, that got into various professional aspects, be they doctors, dentists, lawyers, people that were also interested in being finding ways to get their brand to stand out as they opened their own practices and went to Gavin to, to seek his assistance in terms of creating content for their businesses. So he's developed a special niche area of expertise working with a lot of dentists in very saturated markets and helping them to find some content that will allow them to stand out. So without further ado, I would like to bring to you Gavin Mohan from Ripe Resolutions, who works with a whole host of dentists and even works with dental peers. He does a lot of the work for me. So Gavin, thanks for all the work you do and how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for the kind uh, intro, Sean. I haven't had many people concise the story so well with so much uh, excitement and vigor. So I appreciate the, the very, very kind intro and I'm excited to be here today. Well, you know, we, we try to we try to make sure that we have a little bit of fun with respect to the intros and make sure that people understand that, you know, we are bringing a certain area of expertise. And, you know, I have to juice, juice it up a little bit when I'm talking to a chief excitement officer, right? <laughs> for sure. Yeah, 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 for sure. A lot of people ask me, you know, where that came from or what does that mean? Uh, um, so where, where that where that comes from is that I feel like after 12 years of starting the company and, and building the team, it's really, you know, the onus is really on, on me to, you know, bring the, the reasons why the team members love to be a part of Ripe and the reasons why our clients like to work with us. Um, it's almost like Ripe likes to include the CMO with our services. A lot of companies might not have their chief marketing officer that kind of comes up with the ideas and what's happening in the world of marketing, what's new, what's exciting, what technology is out there, how can we make things more automated, more efficient. So things that you don't normally expect just from an agency that produces creative work. We also you know, really like to stay on top of what's coming down the pipeline and how can we apply it and use it to your business. Um, and the kind of work we do with our clients really excites our team members and draws in a lot of the, the world's best talent. Um, and then having the world's best talent, you know, always is exciting for, for prospects and referrals to work with and just hear what are we doing with these, this brand that might be able, we can, you know, take what we learned from that brand and apply it to a different industry. Maybe that's going to help you stand out. And that makes a lot of sense when you think about it. I mean, too many businesses often have marketing kind of 
hived off to the side, right? Like they don't necessarily bring marketing into the boardroom to the same extent that they would bring finance in or other, other departments like that. Whereas, I mean, yeah, you want to know your numbers and everything like that. But if, if your goal, your goal is growth, you gotta, you gotta have the marketing people involved in that. Right. Of course. It's almost like, it's almost like a business partner where, you know, your, your marketing person has to, you know, feel like, or take on the mindset as if it's their business um, and, and really, you know, act as if they have equity in it, because, you know, I think the, uh, the clients are not really going to want to work with you long term, unless you're actually able to deliver on the some of the goals, settings and ROI that you're, you're talking about, right. So, so yeah, it's just, it's always been a weird gap, I think, between creative agencies and, and small to medium sized businesses or professional practices, because the agency is looking for direction on that industry from the client and the client is expecting that from the ad agency. And there's sometimes a missing gap of who's going to spearhead. So we developed our own account managers and our own, like myself, I work with all the account managers across Canada and the US that I tell them, hey, you're gonna have to put on the CMO hat. You're gonna have to put on the part-time CMO hat so that we're not just gonna be delivering basic marketing topics that every other dental marketing company or every office is doing, you're going to have to try to dig deep and find, you know, ways to stand out amongst the competition. Cause that's why our, our clients like working with us, that kind of extra mile. And, and I think then as I, as I listen to that, I'm kind of thinking, you know, I mean, that goes towards the content, I guess, that you're creating and, and, and let's face it. I mean, content creation, that's kind of a buzzword that probably a lot of dentists have heard. Yeah. but don't fully understand you know, what it means or what it can do for them. So when you're thinking in terms of content creation for dental offices, what, what direction do you go in? How does that apply to them? And what benefits do they get in terms of a growth potential from content creation? Well, content creation is, is like the buzz term for it nowadays, ever since social media hit. But when we started 12 years ago, it was really called like just media production and documenting what's going on. So whether we were hired for um, events or headshots or candids of what an off, like what a business does, um, it was just called media production. And then as the years went on and social media took over, it became high in demand. If you can, if you can find people who will continuously document for you so that you can get out pieces of content on your marketing platforms. And what's happening now is that in your area, all of the search engines that you work with are basically prioritizing which businesses are the most reputable based on who's putting out content that hits what users are asking for. So there might be a lot of families or parents or mothers that are asking a lot of questions on Google or directly in the Facebook search field or the Instagram search field. They might be looking for a solution to a problem. And content creation is, okay, instead of just talking about anything, um, how, do we, you know, how do we choose some hot trending topics that we can place on a client's platform that's gonna get them to intercept a lot of those questions that are taking place online. So content creation, yes, it's, it's, it's documenting everything that you're doing and, and coming up with important pieces of content that you can put out on a consistent basis. That, that tells you know, the online community that you're alive and you're kicking and, and, and that you're up to date on what's going on but also carefully taking a look at what people are searching for. Like during a pandemic, for example, the questions might change of what, what's being asked online. So you have to adapt your content on your platforms to match that. And, uh, and just, you know, because the search engines have been changing the, that, that relevant questions and what people are asking now um, is such a high determining factor of which businesses will be listed and found online. Um, content creation has gone up in importance, you know, uh, on an on a exponential basis. And that's why a lot of our clients come to us to kind of plan out the content and help publish it for them. So you kind of touched upon something that I know from my conversations with a number of dentists is, is a little bit of a challenge for them in terms of completely understanding. And that's this idea of search engines and search engine optimization, I guess, if you will. Um, we know there's a ton of dentists out there and you know everyone's telling them all the time oh you gotta you gotta rank in that those first couple of uh, 
dental offices in your area that'll come up when anyone does a Google search or it's not going to do you any good. And my goal is to employ all these search engine optimization techniques to get you ranked super highly. How effective is that? Like, like how does search engine optimization be provide prove to be a valuable service for dentists, given the large number of dental offices out there? Uh, yeah, a great question. That is a common question that comes up in my consults with dentists all the time. It seems like SEO has kind of gotten a bad rap a little bit when they've spent a lot of money on it, but they don't really see a lot of movement or a lot of ROI from it. Um, they, know, they, they know it's something they should be doing, but the actual tracking and measurement of the return on investment has been unclear um, when they've been working in the past on SEO. So I come from a world before dentistry where SEO to us is, is a gold mine because what, what we're doing is we're using SEO to sell a lot of e-commerce type products like concert tickets or merchandise. And, 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 and we have, we're dealing with high budgets and millions of dollars and we have to make back you know, multiple millions of dollars for it to make sense for, to, to keep our clients happy. So um, SEO is extremely important and we've been tested um, through the ringer on, on making sure it gets results. So when I came to the dentistry world and I heard that people weren't really using it to their advantage, I started to see what the issues were. And the, the thing is, if a, lot of the same, a lot of, if a lot of the SEO companies and dental offices are going after the same kind of search terms, same keywords, and putting out the same content on their websites, um, which I feel like a lot of agencies might, you know, see what comp competitors are placing on their website and be like, we need to talk about that as well, or this holiday is coming up, or this dentistry day is coming up, we're probably going to be SEO optimized because our competition is doing that. So let's do that as well. So it just becomes a real murky place where everyone's doing the same thing. And that's when the question comes up to the dentist. Well, how, you know, how am I going to stand out? You know, how, why, why would Google think that my office is any better than these other offices in my city? Right. So we, we, we took the approach that we learned from, from, from our past clients, which is what Google cares about um, and what any search engine cares about is the reputation of your website. So what Google does is that it, first of all, before reputation, it puts out a lot of criteria of things that you have to do with your platforms in black and white. Um, it's no longer like a secret. It, it's looking for certain things on your website. It's looking for mobile friendly. It's looking for a bunch of things that you just need to check mark. It's either black or white. You either do it or you don't do it. So our first step when we work with clients is like, let's just make sure we're compliant, make sure all your stuff is compliant and we get that out of the way. Um, the second step is, is the recency, uh, which is the content creation we were talking about earlier. You know, when's the last time you, you've put some new piece of content and resources on your website to tell the search engines that you are, your information is up to date and accurate. So that's like another part is recency. That's another big part of your SEO score. Now, the third part of your SEO score called reputation is really what separates good SEO companies from okay SEO companies and why certain ones are ranking in the top three or first ranking versus others. And that's how many other websites are talking about your website. So it's just like how many other dentists are talking about Gavin Mohan? You're going to trust Gavin Mohan more if you know, if a lot of your colleagues are talking about it, it works like that in the online world as well. So your website, you know, you know, Google is trying to see how many other websites have talked about this business and has actually placed a link to send online users back to this website, back to your dental office's website. And the more you have of that, technically the better. Obviously, it's like, it's like having a lot of Google reviews. The more what, well, backlinks, we call it, the more links back to your website, the better. But over time, Google started to get smarter. It's always changing its algorithm to, uh, to what people are trying to do as shortcuts for SEO purposes. So a lot of people were just buying tons of links and the links were placed on all types of websites. So then Google started saying, no, 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 it has to be like high quality third-party websites that are doing it. The, the quality of the, the link and the site that you're linking to, it matters. Maybe it's a government site, maybe it's the Washington Post, maybe the more reputable that the link is placed on, um, you know, the higher your ranking goes in SEO. So to really separate our clients um, from their competition, what we try to do is we use our network of websites and clients that we have from outside of dentistry and, and we look at who just placed a hot trending article 
<clears throat> on a website that a lot of it's getting a lot of traffic, it might not be related to dentistry. It could be related to something happening in news, events, currencies, financial, pop culture, music. Um, it could be it could be on any of those topics. But what we do is we kind of take the, the PR approach and contact the web admin of that website and say that we would like to contribute on this topic on behalf of this business, basically. So it's just as, it's just as simple as having like an Apple ID like uh, for your business. So if you're on apple.com and they put out a new product, you can easily make an Apple ID for your business on behalf of your corporation and leave some feedback and contribute to the new iPhone that came out. By doing that, you're telling Google that you're active on the Apple website and there's a link on that website back to your website. So these are ways to get some PR going about your website on other reputable websites, but it's very important that you leave an authentic link, an authentic contribution. I use this new iPhone for my before and after teeth whitening pictures, and it's been a lot better on the iPhone 13. Um, and I recommend all my dental colleagues to get it. If you'd like to see some of the pictures, you can see it on dentalpeers.ca, for example, or mississaugadentist.com, something like that. So by doing these links for our clients, we found the reputation score jump through the roof. And uh, that's why, you know, we're proud to have a portfolio of clients ranking in the top three on Google. And that's when their phone calls start ringing. That's when, you know, they, they're not so much occupied about which exact link is causing the big increase. They're just happy to get the phone calls. And when they ask their patients, how do they find out about them? They're hearing, you know, Google a lot without having to pay for ads or banner ads. So that gives them a signal that the SEO is working. So you're telling me I need to upgrade my iPhone from the 10 that I currently have to the 13. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> <laughs> yes, if you, like, if you would like to talk about it on the Apple website. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you'd like to contribute to the Apple world, they're probably gonna give, you know, they're probably going to um, harp on you a little bit um, if you're still rocking the Apple, uh, iPhone 9. But yeah, <laughs> thinking outside the box like that, uh, myself and one of our SEO managers, his name is Quinn, we came up with that idea when we heard about the reputation score. And we're like, instead of just linking to other dental blogs and websites and journals, which is great, it's awesome to do that. It comes to, it hits a ceiling at a certain point, you've exhausted all of your link potential. So we're like, hey, we know, what, because we have clients in other industries, we know what's trending, what's hot right now, you know, let's, it doesn't matter if our clients in dentistry, let's link them to a popular high reputation website and let's piggyback off of that SEO juice and, and see if it gets results. So I think a lot of SEO companies are, are, are saying it takes six months to a year to see the results and that you kind of have to wait it out. And that's why they ask for a six month contract or 12, 12 month SEO contract. We don't have those long-term contracts. We're looking for an SEO jump in two to three months. So we're trying to cut that time down. And if we don't get those results in two to three months, that means like our backlink trick didn't work um, or someone has a lot more links ahead of you, um, uh, has been doing it for a while and it's gonna take months and months and years of investment. Then we just give the money back after two or three months. We have a guarantee on the SEO service. And we're like, hey, this is our trick to try to do what it seems like impossible to do. Um, it's work for other clinics. Um, if it doesn't work for you, you can have, you know, we're just going to guarantee it. Let's try it. And if it doesn't work, take the money back, no harm, no foul. But if it does work and you do get into those top three rankings, it's kind of a flat monthly fee way of getting an unlimited amount of leads, right? Because once you do it for one SEO search term, whether it's like dentist near me, then, and you get good at it, you can now do it for teeth whitening near me, root canal, dental implants. You know, you can just set up each page on your website almost like it's its own business and go after one strong search term. And like I said, you're just, you're just paying a good SEO company a flat fee and you don't really owe a commission or cost per click. And, and that SEO ranking could bring in 15, 20, 30 leads from it. So it's a safer bet. Now, there was one thing that you kind of touched upon a little bit earlier, because I heard you mentioning about investing in ads. So, and of course, everyone is talking about Google ads these days. So what's your thought on that? Is that a good investment for dental offices? Is Google ways or Google ads a good way for dental offices to consider going? 
Yeah, great. Yeah, it's a great question. It's another topic that comes up a lot is comparing SEO and Google ads all the time. And I would say five years ago uh, or four to five years ago, um, the ads, the way that the Google ads displayed themselves on Google is that they weren't very attractive looking. They, they would have a green box or a yellow color to them with a big green tag that said advertisement on it or ad on it. And a lot of people would scroll past the ads and go straight to the SEO, what's Google recommending organically, uh, the non-ad way. And that's when we became an SEO company and we told all our clients, don't spend on ads. Everyone skips past ads. It's like a TV commercial, um, just focus on SEO. But then what Google did, because their advertising revenue was going down over time, is they changed the appearance of their ads. Um, and now the ads look very similar to the organic listings. They match with a blue heading, they have black text, uh, the ad, actual word ad has become very, very small, whatever the minimum legal amount that they had to say, uh, they had to display the word ad, it's now very, very tiny. And depending on the demographic you're going after, they might not realize that it's an ad anymore. So, and because ads are the very, very top of the page, those very first banners at the top of the page, now that they've made them look like organic listings, um, more and more people, more and more patients or more and more parents or more and more um, users are clicking on those ads right away because there's something in the ad that matches what they just put into the search field, what they just searched for. And it's just a shortcut to click on the first link that kind of matches what they're looking for. Um, and with ads, you have a lot more control of what the ad says. You get to dictate what your ad says in it. Sometimes with the SEO ranking, um, Google pulls something from your website that thinks it's that's important for the user to see, and you don't have full control over what your SEO listing says, but your ad listing does have, you do have a lot of control of what it can say. And there's also tools that have come out with Google ad headlines that um, is based on AI. So with AI, what, what the ad headlines do is they match what each specific user just searched for. So instead of having one ad that shows the same way for 100 people or 200 people, they've now come up with you know, AI driven ads where what your ad says at the top headline will change automatically. You don't have to do it, but it will change automatically to match similar search terms that each specific user just searched. So every user is getting their own experience of your ad. And because it matches closely with what they just typed in, they're gonna pick your ad over the other ads listed. So Google keeps coming out with new tools that makes it more efficient to get your leads and your ROI going. So because of that major change of, of, of those two things, the, the, the way that the ads look and now the AI headlines, it's created a big shift where it's like 60 to 70% of users are clicking on those before they get to the SEO section. So, you know, a lot of times when clients can't get their reputation score high enough to beat their competition, they just stop spending on SEO really. And they just put their budget on ads instead. Because if they can get in the ad section, they believe that people, if the ad is attractive enough or seems organic enough, um, it will, you know, it will intercept before someone scrolls down to the maps into the SEO section. So now we are moving a lot of our budgets back, um, you know, into Google ads. Um, and it's, it's, it's creating more of an immediate immediate effect. You can turn your ads on today, tonight and start seeing some calls coming in same day, next day, because your ads are right at the top of the page and they're matching what people are searching for. Whereas if you start SEO for the first time, I wouldn't say expect your first lead for like three months, four months. Um, there's a bit of a, a lag there because you do the work now for SEO and it manifests itself when Google finds it and ranks it. Whereas ads, you can pause your ad at any time rechange what it says and then turn it back on again, pause, play, however, you know, activate your ad whenever you want. And it's just, you know, it's bringing in leads on a more efficient uh, basis without having to wait around. So yeah, for sure. I, I would even, I would even say for a new startup practice, for example, start with ads first, start with ads, you know, maybe do a smaller SEO package, do the basics, do the fundament fundamentals, but put most of your budget towards ads if you're in dire need of getting some, some new patients coming in ASAP. So just part of the world of marketing that's constantly changing. Like you said, a couple of years ago, 
don't waste your money on Google ads. Now it's become pretty effective and, and something that you would recommend because everything keeps changing in the world of, of, uh, of marketing on and, and digital marketing and online marketing. And, and I mean, I think that's probably even the case in the world of, you know, like social media. I mean, we, we hear of, of dentists using different social media platforms to, as, as an avenue to, to create a profile for themselves. And some are, are you know, I, I've heard of some dentists have had tremendous success doing fun little videos on TikTok if it works for the, the demographic that they're trying to appeal to. So, you know, in the world of social media, does how important do you actually see that uh, in is, as a factor in search engine optimization? And is it something that you kind of see as, as capable of generating revenue on its own, in its own right? Yeah, that's, a, that's another great question. Thanks, Sean. So the social media, I, we see social media as having two major benefits. So one benefit is that social media has become its own mailing list, its own subscriber list, really. So you can get a lot of your existing patients first to start following you on Facebook, start following you on Instagram. When they come into the office, you kind of have incentives or signage or have the receptionist, you know, connect with them on social media. And social media is now, you know, when they're spending so much time on there to check out their family, their friends or celebrities their favorite brands, when they're on there, they're going to see updates from you as well. So instead of the traditional just like mail email blast that they get to their mailbox and they might not read, now where they're having their fun and excitement, they're going to also get updates from your dental office like it's a friend, you know, like it's a social interaction and they get to see a little bit of what's happening behind the scenes. What is your office up to this week? What did you guys do for this holidays, for Canada Day, whatever it is? Um, you're kind of, it's kind of a new and improved mailing list really because when you do a free post on social media, only the people who are already following you um, can see that post. It's not really going out to new eyeballs. So sometimes the confusion with dentists, the question that I get is, hey, I'm posting on social media all the time, but I'm not getting new patients from it. So I just wanted to remind a lot of dentists that when you're doing those free organic posts, like the, the, the free updates that, that you can post about on your social media, it's, it's not really designed to find new eyeballs. Um, if your if your followers who are already following you happen to share it with someone and pass along an offer or pass along something, then you might get some referrals that way, some social media referrals. But it's not going to create a rush of new patients and new revenue just on its own, like just by posting on its own. Um, the the next step to try to get some new revenue from it is that you want to be posting about things that. Um, other people are talking about, uh, whatever's trending right now. And that's when your social posts show up in what we call the, the discover tab or the checkout new post tab of Instagram and TikTok is because there's something trending going on or there's a hashtag happening. And when you contribute to that hashtag, you take part in that trend. People who are watching those trends once are going to keep getting sent more content like that. That's what social media does. As soon as you're spending more time engaging with something, the social media platform will send you more of that. So it, as being, so for being a content producer, you want to stay on top of the trends. And you mentioned TikTok. TikTok is notoriously known for, you know, trend starting, whether it's a certain music that plays or a voiceover or a funny joke or a challenge. They usually start on TikTok. And why dentists are doing so well on TikTok is because TikTok has way more viewers than it does producers right now. So there's a lot more people who go on there to watch it for entertainment, but they're not creating their own profile. They're not posting. They literally just go there to watch because it's, it's a very user-friendly experience of watching TikTok videos. Little friction going from video to video. It's addictive. It's very addictive. So people that have no ad dollars or people who are not celebrities in any, you know, in any right whatsoever, they, they're seeing millions of views from from TikTok just because they're an early adopter of of TikTok. They got on there early and there's not many competition posting about what they're posting about. So their posts are organically getting into other people's discovery feed, like update feed, news feed. So TikTok is a special case scenario 
of what Instagram was a few years ago. And Instagram, before that, Facebook was new. And before that, you know, different platforms are new. So the newer platform is always going to have a lot of organic reach that I always tell our clients, yes, take advantage. I don't care if you think TikTok is for kids or TikTok is for dances. Uh, I say, no, it is real estate. It, it's real estate, prime real estate of attention, free attention where you don't have to spend on ads like Google and Google ads. Everyone knows about Google is a good way to get stuff. Everyone knows that Facebook ads is a good way. But if a lot of com competing businesses and brands know about something um, and they're all doing the same thing, Facebook and Google is charging a lot more for that attention now, right? So you want to go somewhere where there's less saturation and people posting and running ads because you know the viewers who do find out about TikTok who like viewing TikTok are probably going to see your video because you have less competition in posting and attention. So TikTok is a special case scenario um, where I 100% think you should be posting on there. Um, Instagram is something that it, it's, it always mimics what's coming out new. So it, it adds a Snapchat feature, it adds a TikTok as a feature, and it calls it like Instagram Reels. Instagram Reels, for example, is basically TikTok, but within Instagram, they came out with their own version of it. So if you post on Instagram Reels, you're going to get the same kind of organic exposure as a TikTok post because that's the benefit of TikTok and not many people are posting on Reels, this new feature by Instagram. So, so definitely if you know what's happening, if you keep a pulse on what's happening or work with a firm that keeps a pulse on what's happening, there are ways to get your videos organically spread to um, new eyeballs, new patients, and you can saturate an area or an industry. Um, but the third and final step is that if you do have a good piece of content that you think is very valuable, like it offers value to your audience, um, it's, it's best to boost it. So it's best to be like, okay, I had five free posts this month, but this one naturally got the most thumbs up and likes and people are calling me about this one. Maybe I'm going to pay Facebook or pay Instagram some ad dollars to show it more to this neighborhood or this suburb or this community because that's, you know, that's what social media, that's how they make their money. The, the social media platforms make it through advertising dollars. But you should create as many posts as you can for free to get a feel of what people like and get, get accustomed to posting and get on a regular schedule. But then if to really accelerate the amount of new revenue and new dollars from it, you want to boost one of those posts, turn it into an ad. And then, you know, then a lot of new eyeballs will see it and you'll start getting DMs. You'll start getting more phone calls of people saying, I saw this in my Facebook feed. I saw this offer. I saw your advice. Um, for my child in your in my Facebook feed. That's why I reached out to you. So yeah, there's kind of three ways to do it. There's the organic posts that people refer. That's number one. Number two, you can start posting on trending articles that try to get discovered. Use hashtags, mention other influencers, mention a popular event that's happening today and more people will see it. And then the third way is to actually pay the social media platform to target a community for you and saturate them with seeing your social media post. So there's so, kind of two things that I'm sort of drawing from that. And yeah. first of all is, you know, stay, stay cutting edge. So you, that's your way of using social media to get new eyeballs. But at the same time, don't underestimate the importance of putting out content that isn't necessarily for new eyeballs, but reinforces your brand loyalty with your existing customer base. Because let's face it, people can be fickle. There can be all kinds of new reasons for people to decide, I think I'm going to change dentists at this point in time. And it's just as important to maintain their loyalty with the posts that they see as creating sort of a sense of community with, with you and which centers around you. Correct. Yeah, that, that the first point I was trying to make there was the, the new emailing list of touching base with your existing patients is the best way to do that is with social media because they really form a bond, a uh, social bond with you that, you know, especially during the pandemic, you know, when there was such a lack of seeing people in person, posting on social media was, was very more important to let them know of what's happening. You're alive, you're kicking, you're not, you know, giving up, your practice is still going. We're just doing things differently. We're doing things virtual. Um, so social media became very, very important to keep those touch bases with your existing patients. And you'll just be surprised how on social media, 
the more times you post about something that's not maybe dental service related, maybe you're posting about your pet or you're posting about your hobbies or what you did with your kid this weekend, that's going to form a bond with some of your patients because they have a dog or they have a kid that they went to play baseball with or they, they feel closer with you. They feel a connection with you because they see you doing things that they're doing that they like and they respect and you become more personable. You're not just a, a doctor on a pedestal anymore. You're now, you know, a friend of theirs that they can trust. So that's a lot of ground we covered there, Gavin. So I really appreciate you taking the time to do that. And I'm sure people are going to have some questions uh, that, that they might want to direct towards you. And they might even want to know some of the other cool things that, that Ripe Resolution is up to. So, uh, you know, start off, let me know what's a good way for people to be able to reach out to you if they wanted to get a hold of you or a member of your team. Um, the easiest way is to actually, like if you ever Google Ripe Resolution and just go to our, 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 our homepage, the very first button you'll see is to text us, actually. We, we really believe in text communication um, to kind of separate from emails and social media. Um, you know, our team, our office has its own text line where, you know, everything is treated like an urgent friend has just texted us. Um, so I feel like that's the best way to, to reach our office, the dispatch. And if you need to speak to Gavin, if you need to speak to a photographer, if you need to speak to an ad specialist, um, they'll take over the chat. You know, you, you stay in the same text message chat and our team will, you know, change personnel or you speak to me. Um, and from the chat, we could always set up a Zoom call like this to kind of go over how do these things apply in your community um, in, for your business. Perfect. So what else is Ripe Resolution up to then? What are some cool projects you got going on? Well, to be honest, like a lot of stuff that you see happening in pop culture, we're working behind the scenes on a lot of what's been going on. So in our industry, award season just finished. It's a kind of a later award season than usual due to coming out of the pandemic, but always usually between February and like March or April is when you have the Oscars and the Grammys and the Billboard Awards. And a lot of these events have, um, content creation, or basically where we have to be on site and document what's going on and give that content to the sponsors and so that they can use it for their marketing campaigns. And basically, under a very big time crunch, um, we are often asked to pull off some very crazy ads, some very interesting case studies that we're sharing on our, starting to share on our websites. We're starting to tell the stories of what happened behind the scenes when we worked with this celebrity, or when we worked with this big company. Um, and if, if, our, if, our, if all of our clients can learn from what we did or ask us to kind of do the same kind of campaigns for them, there's a big value there. If you just go on our website and look at the new case study section, the new blog section, where we're going to be putting all those case studies there and kind of tell the story. Like maybe you just watched the Grammy as a viewer, but now you're getting a behind the scenes look of what happens behind the scenes for marketing purposes, for advertising purposes. Um, it's, it's a whole, it's a whole different world. So we're going to be sharing that with our clients. And the second, the second part of what we're, what we're doing coming out of the pandemic is we've invested a lot of, you know, what we've been earning over the past couple of years into assets um, that we can share with our clients. So coming out this year uh, is a few different assets that we'll be sharing with. So, so we have a, a, a yacht that we invested in. It's called the Ripe Yacht and it's hitting Toronto this summer. And this yacht has conference rooms on it. It has two levels of conference rooms and obviously all the other boat features that you expect on a yacht. But a lot of our clients, only Ripe clients are going to be able to use this boat either for their business, for their team building, or for their, you know, networking, or just for family bonding, if they want to take their family and friends out um, on the water with them. But just by being a right member, they're going to have access to that yacht to use. Um, so it's just nice to create more of a tight-knit family, a tight-knit membership, where we're trying to be very selective with who we work with. In the marketing game, we can only work with a dentist per city, and that's our partner, right? We can't really advertise or do SEO against another dentist in the same area, right? There's a conflict of interest there. So we really treat our members like family, and we're trying to come up with ways um, to share the benefits and thank our clients for choosing us as their marketing partner. So the right Yacht is just the first of many assets that we'll be rolling out over the years for just our members to use. Cool stuff. I mean, never mind wanting to, to work with Right Resolution. I think people are going to, you know, hand in their resignations where they are and they're going to say, hey, how do I get to work for Right Resolution? This sounds like a cool place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do get a lot of uh, sons and daughters and nephews and nieces 
of our clients um, always applying and you know after we do some work for our clients it's it's always like oh well my you know my son or daughter loves marketing loves media loves pop culture and they'd love to gain some experience so that's another thing about being a client yeah we, we are happy to teach and bring people in and show them the ropes and if our experience can help benefit you know a uh, up and coming marketing person um, then we're we're all for it sounds good i'll get you my resume soon <laughs> all right well thanks everyone thanks gavin for joining us today it's been great having you and thanks to everyone for joining us here on quick hits i hope you enjoyed this episode if you did by all means please 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 press like you know make some comments any questions or concerns put them in the comments section we'd be more than happy to see them by all means feel free to subscribe to the dental peers youtube channel so that you can make sure you become aware of any new videos that show up as soon as i put them on there in the meantime, we will be back again in the not too distant future with my next mystery guest. And I look forward to bringing that person to you then. So do take care and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye everyone.